there and welcome to week three, the third and final video in our sock knit along series. So week one, we started our cast on, we knit our cuff, we knit the pattern on the leg. Week two, we learned how to make a heel flap, short row turns for the heels, picking up stitches along the gusset and how to do the gusset decreases. Then the, during this last week, we worked on the foot portion of the sock and now we have reached the end the toe so i've worked here in pattern keeping our slip stitch pattern on the top stitches of the top of the foot and then just working in a plain stocking stitch for the bottom of the foot and i've worked here as the pattern says for the smallest size to four and a half inches and i measure from where you pick up the stitches here to the end of your work. And if you would like a customized um, fit for your socks, it's good to just keep in mind that you can just try your sock on and um, work until it's about an inch and a half shorter than the finished desired length. So because we wanted to keep the stitch pattern on the top of our foot, you'll remember that we did add an extra stitch into the top stitches just to keep the pattern even. So before we start our toe decreases, we just have to work one round where we decrease one stitch. And I like to keep it at the center of those top foot stitches. So for this round, just before we start our toes, in the pattern it'll say, knit your stitches on your first needle, and then on your second needle, you're gonna knit to about halfway along and then just decrease one stitch in the middle, in the center there. And then um, knit to the end of your row. So now we have the same stitches uh, on the top of our foot, on the instep, as we do on those bottom foot stitches. So I'm just gonna get back to my first needle. This is my third needle. So we can start the toe decreases. Now, what's going to happen on the toe decrease rounds is every other round, we're going to decrease four stitches. That's two on the top of the, of the foot and two on the bottom of the foot right at the sides where the toes are. It creates a really lovely shape for the toes. Now, to do that, it's very simple decreases. On your first needle, you're going to knit to the last three stitches. So I'm knitting to the last three stitches on my first needle and I'm doing a knit two together. So I have three here. I'm gonna knit the next two stitches together and then knit one. And then on my second needle, we're gonna decrease one stitch at either end. So we're going to knit one SSK the next two stitches, knit across to the last three, and then knit two together, knit one. So what this is doing is creating um, left and right slanted decreases to give you that toe shape. So I'm gonna slip, slip, and knit in the back loops this stitch, and then and we're not working in pattern anymore. We're just doing um, knit rounds. So you don't have to worry about keeping continuation of that pattern that we had in the leg and the top of the foot. So on the second needle, I've knit one slip slip knit and now I'm knitting across to the last three stitches. And on those last three there, I'm going to knit two together, knit one. And then I'm going to move to my third needle and I'm going to knit one, slip, slip, pass them back on, knit through the back loops to make an SSK and knit to the end of my needle. So that's the first row of toe decreases and you have decreased two stitches or four stitches in total, two um, on the top of your toes and two on the bottom of the foot. The second round is just a plain knit round. And then my 
third needle, I'm going to knit and do my first round of toe decreases again. Okay, so again, the decrease round is on your first needle, you're just gonna knit to your last three stitches. And knit two together. On your second needle, knit the first stitch, SSK, and then knit to the last three stitches on your needle and knit two together, knit one. And then on your third needle, knit one, SSK, and knit to the end of the needle. And you're just gonna repeat those two rounds, one knit round, one decrease round, until you get to 16, 20, or 20 stitches total. Okay, so I'm at the end of my toe decreases. I have 16 stitches on my needles, which are divided as eight stitches along the top of on my second needle, and then four stitches each on my um, third and first needle. But to get prepared to graft the toe stitches together, I'm actually just going to knit these stitches on my first needle onto the end of my third needle. So that now our stitches are evenly divided on two needles. Okay, so we have them like this. And now we are ready to uh, graft these two, these two sets of stitches together or using something called Kitchener stitch. So to do that, you will need a large eyed tapestry needle, a yarn needle. And so you're holding your needles so that the yarn is attached to your needle on the back. You have them here and your stitches are aligned and we're going to graft these stitches together so that they close up um, seamlessly. So to Kitchener stitch, there's a little bit of a setup. So first you're going to insert your needle in the back and the first stitch on your back needle knitwise. So just like you're gonna knit, and you're not gonna slip it off the needle, just lay, just leave it on there. And then on the front needle, you're going to insert as if you're gonna purl, and you're just gonna keep it on there. So those are that's your setup, very simple. Now the rhythm of Kitchener stitch goes as follows. On the back needle, you're always going to insert Slip it off as if to purl. And then insert your yarn needle through the next stitch as if to knit and you're gonna leave it on the needle. Then you're gonna move back to your first needle and you're gonna put your yarn needle through as if to knit and you're gonna slip it off. And then on the second stitch, insert purlwise and leave it on the needle. So it goes purl slip, knit stay. And then also it's, it's handy to keep the stitches closer to here. And then on the first needle, knit slip, Pearl stay. That's how I remember it. Pearl, slip it off the needle, knit it, and leave it on stay. Knit, slip, pearl, stay. And after each one, I'm, I'm tightening it, but not too tight because you want to keep 
kind of consistent tension on these Kitchener stitches that you're sewing um, as the same as the rest of your sock. So purl, slip, knit, stay. Knit, slip. Okay, and you're just going to do that until all the stitches have been grafted together. It's a little magical. Okay, and I'm at the last couple of stitches, so I'm just gonna slip, pearl slip. Knit stay. Knit slip. Pearl stay. And then to end it off, I'm just gonna pearl and slip and knit and slip. Going to pull that securely. And as you can see, the motion of those stitches and how we sewed them together recreates the knitted fabric. So it creates a seamless toe there, which is really comfortable to wear. It's much more comfortable than if you had a seam along the toe in your, in your shoe. Okay, so when I do this, I always keep my needle on here because now's the perfect time to Pull your sock inside out, kind of poke this on the inside, and then in the inside of your sock, you're going to weave in your ends. Now keeping in mind the comfort, I like to weave in um, the yarn along the sides or the bottom. And I just hide it in these side decrease stitches and then weave in my ends. And so I'm going to do that a little bit more, weave in my ends. I'm going to do the same up here with the tail and now's a great chance to even up if you you have a little, uh, maybe an uneven part there where your cast on was. That's a great place to tidy that up. And now you have your knit sock. You just repeat it for your second one. Keep in mind that tip I gave you about casting on for your second sock at the same point in the yarn, uh, color change for self-striping yarns to keep both pairs, uh, both socks in your pair looking consistent. Thanks. I hope you learned something and I can't wait to see your socks.